the Money is made possible by financial support from Old National Bank and Chicagoans like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to In The Money. I'm your host, Kimberly Loftus, a CPA and financial executive who today is financially secure, but was not always. Tonight, we dive into the mystifying world of inflation, a force that sneaks its way into our wallets and creates rising costs. Inflation invisibly alters the value of our money. It is a persistent rise in the general price of things, including services over time. Now you might think, why should I care about this economic hocus pocus? Well, inflation's effects ripple through our lives, touching everything from a loaf of bread to our dreams of home ownership. When inflation strikes, the dollars in your pocket become less powerful and thus don't go as far for your grocery bill to the new car. Inflation chips away at your hard earned money, making it feel like it's disappearing in your hands like a magician. The impact of inflation reaches far beyond your everyday expenses. Investments and savings can be impacted as well. However, understanding inflation arms us with knowledge and empowers us to weather its storms. As consumers, we can adjust so that inflation is not as harmful. Tonight, we will learn about consumer economics and tips to weather these storms. Let's get it in the living room. Today in the living room, we have a guest who is a financial guru and currently helps individuals understand money and credit. She is here today to explain what inflation is and why it happens, as well as break down some other economic topics. Please welcome Tish Griffin to the show. Hi, Tish. Hi, thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for coming. So a lot in the news we hear about inflation, we've heard the term stagnation, we've heard the term um, rising prices, all these mm -hmm. different things. But for the average person, we don't understand what that means. But first, I would like to start with talking about how do you know about all this economic stuff? I grew up not knowing anything about finances. Mm -hmm. And I had to go through uh, what you would call trial and error mm -hmm. until I was able to learn. Now, the good part is that when I was, got my first job, that job focused on financial literacy. Mm. I was able to become eventually a credit counselor to help people with their credit. I started off um, just learning about credit because no one taught me. No one taught me how to use a dollar mm. or the importance of even saving that dollar. Mm. And so it was just amazing that I had that opportunity. I went into the banking industry and became a loan, a mortgage loan originator. And so I was still able to spread more news and uh, just how you handle your finances, how your mind perceives finances and money and being able to deal with that. So I would say mostly trial and error, but the credentials helped. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so before we get into some definitions, how can a person, assuming that they know a little bit about the definitions, how can they read up on what's happening in the economy day to day instead of just getting the sound bites? What would be some recommendations? Well, I do recommend doing your research. Mm -hmm. There are, most people nowadays, they look at TikTok videos, they look at YouTube videos, but going directly to the source and deciphering that information for yourself. So be it, there are some great sites out there, bankrate.com, Forbes, those are some great, great ways to begin to understand economics and what's going on in the world. Articles pop up all the time with different news outlets. Um, you've got MSN Money, mm -hmm. Yahoo. They do a great job of bringing that information as well. So do your research. Now talking about headlines, like right now, everyone's talking about the Federal Reserve and the interest rate policy. So can you tell people what is the Federal Reserve and how do they impact the interest rates that we see on mortgage loans, auto loans, the savings rate we get from banks? The common misconception is that the Federal Reserve Bank is an actual bank, mm -hmm. but it really is not. They do um, promote, they do make policies and they house where our policies are and with the Federal Reserve Bank. So they are the place that the banks actually go to get the money mm -hmm. that we get. Mm. So if the bank is going to someone else to get their money, they have to be charged a rate. And that's the rate that we all hear about. Mm -hmm. With that being said, guess what? If the bank has to charge, be charged to get that money, they're going to charge us. Mm. And that's where 
a lot of people say, okay, the Fed's rate is this, and that means that's going to be my interest rate. And no, it's not. That's the rate that the banks are charged to borrow that money. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the rate that we pay would be higher than that. So what you're saying is the bank goes to the federal government, gets a loan or money, they charge them, let's say, 3%, and then in turn they take that money, turn that into a loan to me, and they might charge me 5%. Correct. Okay. And so because the bank is charging, getting charged 3%, but if the Federal Reserve go back and say, hey, we're going to be 4%, they have to pass that increased rate on to us. Correct. And so that's what yes. impacts those rates that we see in the marketplace. Right. And people wonder why the rates are increasing like that. Well, the Federal Reserve, they meet throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And each time they get to decide, okay, what are we going to do? Are we going to increase interest rates? Are we going to leave them the same? What's our policy? Are we going to reduce the rates? And during that meeting, they decide what they're going to do. Everyone stands around waiting, guessing, mm -hmm. making predictions. And you notice that in the market when that happens, the rates may go up, mm -hmm. they may come down. You know, um, the stock market may go up and down, fluctuating on what the Fed is expected to do. Mm -hmm. But you don't really know until they get out of that meeting. So the last meeting they decided to leave things, you know, they didn't raise, they didn't reduce. They left it the same. But now everyone's thinking, okay, what's going to happen when they get together in September? Right. Right. So we're always in this guessing game. But keep in mind, we are the ones that will pay the cost no matter what the Federal Reserve does. So as an individual, if I'm doing my research and I'm reading up about and watching the Federal Reserve every quarter, and I know what the market is anticipating, and I decide, hey, I think the market may be right. Are there scenarios where maybe if I'm waiting to make a financial decision, I need to make it maybe quicker because the Federal Reserve is maybe expected to raise rates, so it'll be cheaper for me to do a loan now than later? Is that how, as a consumer, I can use that information? As a consumer, that's a great way to use that information. You're, it's still a guessing game, mm -hmm. and all of this turns out to be a game when we try to apply it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we may do it and we may lose money. Sometimes we may do it and we'll gain big on it. But it's all in monitoring it, making our predictions, and honestly, a lot of times when we lose, we can't hold that against, you know, emotionally, mm -hmm. mentally, and take that out on ourselves because we were wrong this time, but let's work do our research to make sure that next time our prediction comes out the way that we intend it. Okay. Now, what about inflation? Like, everybody's talking about inflation. I know it's went down in the most recent reporting period, but it's still high compared to history. What is going on with inflation? What causes inflation? Now, inflation really is what it says. The costs that we pay are inflating. The costs that we pay for utilities, for food, all of that, and a lot of times inflation looks at everything around us, all the goods and services that we use, and they determine, okay, how's it doing as compared to 12 months ago? Mm -hmm. So over the last 12 months, let's say in March, inflation was showing at 5%. So everyone's like, okay, it's a little shaky. Are we going to go into a recession? Mm -hmm. And then we wait for the next, the end of the next month to see how inflation is going to be. Well, it came out to 4.9. Mm -hmm. Now you may say, well, that's not really a change, but for some people, some individuals felt that that index, that consumer price index of 4.9 made everything a little bit better. It eased tension, mm -hmm. but you may say that it's really no change. Now when you take away the energy costs and the cost of food, now we're using a different index. It's mm -hmm. still inflation, it's still able to tear, but it's called the core. We're getting down to the core number. Mm -hmm. That one still is at 5.5. Last month it was at 5.6. So there are so many different indexes, so many different ways to measure how the economy is doing. And when you put all of those indexes together and you come out with a negative number or those indexes start to show negatively, that's when the talks of recession come into play. So when we take a step back, what do you mean by index? Index is just a tool that's used to measure um, how we're doing in the economy. The price of food, we know that that's increased significantly. We know that the price of homes has increased, you know, mm -hmm. very significantly, over 34 percent. So we're looking at these different indexes, these different ways of telling how things are going on in the world, and it's just the number that's put with it. 
Now, can I put it this way, or it could be a basket of goods, like a, a loaf of bread, uh, a gallon of oil, and they put this all in one basket, and then they measure it today, and they measured it 12 months ago, and that's mm -hmm. what includes, that's the index that they're measuring. It's like the same thing over, over time. Over and over. Okay, right. got it. Right. Perfect. And so as consumers, how can we use that information? With that, we can use it to gauge our own budget, our own finances. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's really, really important because right now um, we're looking at the cost of everything skyrocketing, but we want to know how we can maintain our home, how we can make sure we are you know, meeting our daily costs, our daily goods, making sure that we are able to buy groceries. I know a few months ago, everyone was struggling looking at the price of eggs. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at the price of eggs, we're looking at commodities and we're seeing that those prices have increased. Mm -hmm. And we're wondering why have those prices increased? A lot of times it's because with what's happening in the market, those jobs that are needed to produce whatever that is, something's happened and those jobs are no longer there. So for a minute, because of the scarcity, because no jobs are there to get the eggs to us, there's mm -hmm. no trucks to deliver those things to us. And those producers, they're having to pay higher prices. So now again, that's passed on to us. Mm -hmm. And we can gauge our budget with that by saying, okay, I see that there's less jobs. All of those things flow into each other and we're not even recognizing how it affects the everyday consumer. Because yes, no jobs in this area, mm -hmm. no trucks to bring the supply to us. Now we have to pay more in order to get that. And the, and the financial term for that, a lot of people throw out there that you put so eloquently in layman's terms is supply and demand, is that correct? Yes, Okay. yes. We deal with supply and demand whether we know it or not. Mm -hmm. And it affects everything that we do. So again, talking about groceries, mm -hmm. trying to get a loaf of bread when it was a dollar a few months ago, now we're looking at $5. Eggs went up significantly where some of the, a carton of eggs was almost $6 mm -hmm. or more in certain places. Now it's gone back down and that's because now people are seeing, okay, more jobs are coming into play. So what tips would you give to someone who just wants to learn more about what we've talked about today? Honestly, in order to learn more, you need to apply it the way that you know it. Look at the things that you use. You can go around your house and take a look at what's important to you. What do I buy the most of? And then do a, a quick search on the industry. Look at the prices, not just how they relate in your area, but in other areas. There's different maps and tools that are out there that you can easily get this information. Sometimes you have to look a little bit harder, but you're able to apply it to what's important in your life. And I think that's the important thing. Also, while you're doing that, you can also look at different ways to save money in that search. Okay comparing the different brands as well, seeing if what you have is good enough, or even if there's some other ways, different life hacks that you can use to make things easier for you, mm -hmm. to make things cheaper for you, and to save money. Well, thank you so much for those economic tips and education so that we can understand what's going on in the marketplace a little bit better. Hi, I'm Ryan G. I'm the host of Tweenish. This week on Teenage, we'll be talking about mental health with a special guest, Miss Sylvia. What can tweens do to have good mental health? Really having a good support system of adults that you can bounce ideas off of. You can watch my show Friday nights, 7 o'clock on CanTV19, CanTV.org, and the new CanTV Plus app. Today in studio, we have Ben Jurgens, Director of Financial Empowerment, who will explain to us how we can use financial tools, be it from banks or our creditors, to manage money better. Welcome to the studio, Ben. What are some of the tools that can help us manage our finances yeah, better? Yeah, it's good to be back, Kimberly. So there, there's a lot of great tools, from very simple to um, more mobile-friendly. So for example, uh, something that my wife and I do is we have a daily worksheet that we would write down our expenses every single day for a week just to find out where our money is going, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that most people just don't know where their money is going. Other things out there, you know, a lot of banks and credit unions, FIs, they have their own mobile apps out there. And a lot of people don't know this, but many people's debit card transactions are already being recorded within that mobile app. A lot of people just don't go to look at it. They're looking at their daily balances and do I have money to get through today, right? But there's some great tools there. 
Other um, financial tools out there could be Mint is a popular one. Uh, Rocket Money is great on managing subscriptions. Uh, really a lot of different, really good apps that you can just search in the App Store to help manage that day-to-day -day expenses. Now going back to the non-technical, yeah. You actually sit down there and write everything out every week with pen so and paper. I did. So when I when I recommend when I'm working with couples or individuals, mm -hmm. you know, many if we were to survey people and ask them how many of you have ran out of money before you got paid again, mm -hmm. almost everyone would raise their hand, but they have wow. no idea where the money went. Mm -hmm. So I challenge people to physically write it down for one week just to see where the money goes and then revisit that the next week because when they start to write it down, then it becomes clear in their mind, like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I've spent this mm -hmm. much money on a regular basis. And it's pretty eye-opening for most people. And what about budgeting tools? Like, I, you know, some people just don't know how to budget. Yeah. Are there tools available out there to help with that? Yeah, so, you know, we at banks will a lot of times go out in the communities with employers, whoever it might be, to teach the basics of budgeting, because you're right. One of the biggest reasons people don't budget is maybe they don't know how, or maybe they're afraid if they do, they're going to change their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of times you can use a one-page simple budget. Um, for many people, they like Excel. I, I use Excel personally. But I found out the more complicated and long-term a budget gets with multiple pages, people just mm. don't want to do it. Right. But I'm a big fan of the KISS method, right? Keep it simple. Mm. And, and because, to be honest, with a budget, when we start putting in you know, gross income, minus FICA tax, mm -hmm. Medicare tax, all these different things, mm -hmm. people just kind of really don't want to go through that hassle. Mm -hmm. So keeping it very simple and straightforward is really key to see where our money's going. So one way to keep it simple would be just to start with what you the take home pay. Yeah. Don't worry about right. what tax, because you can't control that anyway. Exactly. Bring okay. home pay. I, I say keep your income very conservative mm -hmm. and lower if possible. Don't consider those windfalls part of your budget, but really they just had monthly bring home income. And so what are the, the, so you say you can use the apps, you can use your computer and Excel, mm -hmm. and also you can use pen and paper, but you say you did you do it as a family. Yes. Do you recommend always doing it as a family? I actually really do. Mm -hmm. You know, if generally in a relationship you're going to have one saver and one spender, and I think that's really key to bring those individuals together. Mm -hmm. And if they're the same, that's fine too. But really bringing together so you're on the same page. You know, most families have long-term and short-term goals mm -hmm. they want to achieve. But if they're not working together with their budget, it's really hard to achieve those long-term goals. So I think holding each other accountable mm -hmm. is a huge thing when it comes to sticking to a budget to help achieve those goals. Well, thank you so much, Ben. I think you touched on something that for the technical, the non-technical, for the single and the family person, something for everybody. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kimberly. I'm Anna Valencia, one of your hosts for Joy and the Breakthrough. On our next episode, we are joined by Dr. Karen Lindsay. And let me tell you, from my own experience, when the Lindsay sisters speak, you want to listen. So don't miss this episode where we talk about the experiences and labels that influence our Joy journey. Tune in this Monday at 7 p.m. on Can TV Channel 19, streaming on CanTV.org, and now available on the new Can TV Plus app. As we heard from Tish, What's happening with the economy can sound complicated, but by understanding the key concepts, you can be in the know of what is actually going on. As we all know, we are currently experiencing high inflation, as well as some issues getting the things we may need. To share some tips on how to weather the current economic storm, join us in the living room as Angela Underwood. Welcome to the show, Angela. Thank you so much for having me, Kimberly. So as you heard, Tish was talking about inflation, yes. mm -hmm. supply chain, demand mm -hmm. issues. Yes. And so that is a storm. We haven't yes. seen inflation like this oh. in years. And I'm going to be dating myself. Back in the 70s, the, the president, Jimmy Carter, <laughs> got put out of office because inflation was so yes. high, oil yes. was high. Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of going through that now. Yes. And so I wanted to talk to you about what can we mm -hmm. do to help us. We can't control this. So what can we do? We cannot control it, Kimberly. And Actually, we are going through high inflation uh, with the current issue and the uh, governance and the high debt um, issue that we're dealing with mm -hmm. now. We're going to deal with a lot more of that and hopefully we're not going into a recession, mm -hmm. you know, with this high inflation. But with dealing with high inflation, I think what we need to do is look at the basic. You know, we talked about it and you've talked, spoken about it on your show before mm -hmm. as we look at budgeting and mm -hmm. savings. You know, we have to pre prepare ourselves for these times. And in 2008, we know that we had the subprime lending mm -hmm. issue. And I wrote a book on how, you know, we can get through those different 
uh, crisis in our lives. And coming out of a pandemic, mm -hmm. that also had an effect, impact on our government spending money. And so the inflation overall is um, it's a, it's a snowball. Right. It's just filling up. We have inflation um, with the economy mm -hmm. and the crisis of the COVID situation mm -hmm. that's going on and also the war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Okay, the government is shooting out a lot of money and that's also affecting our economy. And so the, some of the things we can do now in our economy is to look at our budget, our spending, you know, what we're spending our, mon our money on. Um, we know that, you know, as a Tish mentioned, the price of eggs, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, the economy is, is really, you know, getting high up there and the price of our eggs and the mm -hmm. price of, you know, food. We have to look at cutting back on spending. Mm -hmm. If you're going out to the restaurant five times a week or four times a week, cut back on two times a week, yeah. you know, getting back to the basic, make dinner at home, take your lunch to work. You know, some of those things will help you to, you know, uh, have more money, mm -hmm. you know, in your in your um, access, you know, your pocket for your family there. And so those are some ways that we can cut back on our spending and, you know, savings and, you know, this particular time that we're in right now. So yeah. what about the debt ceiling? You mentioned that yes. is going mm -hmm. on about yes. this um, tug of war between the executive branch that consists of the president mm -hmm. yes. as well as the Congress mm -hmm. about raising the amount of debt the United States will yes. take on to pay their bills. Yes. How does that affect me, the average consumer? Well, it affects us because um, there's going to be a um, really big impact on the Social Security a portion if you know, if it doesn't increase, you know, we cannot get government to increase the debt ceiling. Um, and there's also going to be a lot of job layoffs. So you so will be saying, when impacted you say Social by Security, it. Social Security, what yes. does that mean? People are not going to get their checks? People may not get their checks. Yeah. So they yeah. have to decide so who gets paid, who doesn't get paid, exactly. or whatever's available. Exactly. Yeah. So it could be have a devastating effect on the economy. Uh, so we have to really, you know, hope that things work out, you know. What about people Congress. who contract with the federal government? Will they be impacted? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, as it relates to uh, companies laying off, we're mm -hmm. looking at financial institutions, government um, organizations, and other companies that will have to lay off because of, you know, the issue with the uh, debt. The state ceiling. government is not impacted. It's just federal government, correct? With the of uh, the federal government, and it could also boil down to the state as well. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. They get yeah. federal dollars. Is that mm -hmm. why? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, federal. Is there dollars anything we can limited. do as individuals to prepare ourselves? You know, we mm -hmm. talk about budgeting, living on a budget. You know, you're looking at where your money goes. Mm -hmm. You know, as Ben just mentioned, and you know how much money you have coming in and mm -hmm. how much going out, and you know you're not able to make your bills mm -hmm. each month, and so you need to sit down and look at where you can cut back in those areas, as well as look at having an, an emergency fund if you are employed. You have, you know, you mm -hmm. have money coming in, start saving that money. You know, okay. look where you can save more and invest as well. So a lot of the tips that you gave about budgeting, mm -hmm. having an emergency fund, Typical. those are long-term goals that if I didn't have an emergency fund today, yes. if mm -hmm. I don't have a budget today, it's going to take a minute to do that. Yes. What are some quick things that I could do to maybe save money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in these times of high inflation, as well as like the debt ceiling issue will either happen or not happen in early June. So what can I do over the next couple of weeks maybe yeah. to help mm -hmm. me start saving money? Yeah, to help you start saving money within the next couple of weeks is put yourself into a habit of doing those types okay. of things, you know? Okay. Um, what about your couponing? Or, As, exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's more of a habit that you're picking up. Okay. You know, as you mentioned, couponing, you know, that could be an option you can use as far as cutting back mm -hmm. and saving more money. Uh, just, you know, putting your household mm -hmm. on alert right. with what's coming up. And um, I know I used to be a coupon, couponer when my daughter yes. was first born. I used to visit these websites where they teach yes. you how to match <laughs> coupons. Mm -hmm. So grocery stores might have a double coupon day. Right. And then you take, so they would have their, and they had their own coupon. Mm -hmm. But then the manufacturer of that product would also have a coupon. Yeah. So then by the time you <laughs> combined all this stuff along with the sale, you're paying pennies on the dollar right. to buy something. So it's like all these different things. Just because, you know, I was a nerd like that. Yes. But yes. I enjoy that kind of thing. Yes. So doing things like that. Yeah. I mean, the simple things. The simple and, things. Yeah. Just. So what are the simple things that you recommend besides Q comic? Yeah. Yeah. Some of the other simple things I, I would recommend is, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
stop going out as much right. as you do, you know, right. spending money and then look at your shopping, cleaning your closet. Mm -hmm. You know, those mm -hmm. are simple things. You may have clothing in your closet that you have tags on them already mm -hmm. and you're still going out to buy new shoes and new right. bags and, you know, but looking at those areas okay. too where you can, you know, cut back and even, you know, some of the things you can take to a consignment store right. and get more money from it. Um, and even in this economy, you may look at, you know, getting additional uh, income coming in through mm. renting out a space in your home or renting out your garage and things like that, you know, looking at other um, other type of income, you know, for so your coming family. coming up with some, yeah. maybe some side some hustles ideas. or looking at maybe some hobbies exactly. that you have that you mm -hmm. really get at that maybe you can start charging people for, yes. for instance. Yes. Okay. And then, like you said, <laughs> going through your clothes, things you don't wear and like selling those or putting yeah. those on consignment mm -hmm. to kind of save money are good tips. Right. And right. in addition to, you know, coupon, couponing and seeing what you're spending right. today on different things. Exactly. Okay, exactly. perfect. Yeah, some ideas. And so what other things can we do to be in this environment from mm -hmm. a stress about money standpoint? What can we do? Well, what I will say is um, relax. Okay. <laughs> you know, things will work out, mm -hmm. but, you know, you have to take action. You know, of course, you know, you have that faith and confidence mm -hmm. that things will work out, but you have to move forward on your, you know, your faith. Yes. Now, Tisha mentioned the interest rates going up, which, mm -hmm. you know, negatively impact the amount that we will pay on right. a loan, mm -hmm. our mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. But there's a positive side. If you had a savings account, mm -hmm. that rate's going to go up. So you have a little bit extra money. What are, you, what are your thoughts about that? Well, savings accounts really not going up as much mm -hmm. um, unless you have one of the high interest rate savings account. And usually mm -hmm. those, you have to have a, a couple of thousand or $20,000 mm -hmm. in those to have those types of savings account, mm -hmm. um, you know, pretty much at the 1% or below 1% mm -hmm. as savings. Uh, so, you know, more of um, looking at other areas where you can invest in as well other than the savings account. So yes. the goal would be to make extra money, put it somewhere where you're not going to touch it, but yes. could earn a little bit of something on it. But do we want to put it at risk in this type of environment? Oh, well, it depends on where you're at okay. in your um, particular area. If you're close to retirement, I would say do not um, high risk interest um, investment funds. Mm -hmm. You want to stay more of a low risk type, mm -hmm. you know, because the market is very volatile during the stage. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you're younger, then of course, you know, it's okay to invest in the stock market because you have that time to make up. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, definitely, you, if you're younger, depending on where you're at in your um, retirement and mm -hmm. moving forward to your retirement age, uh, you have the opportunity to invest in the stock market is, I wouldn't, you know, any final tips for people looking about how to manage their finances in these times? Well, the final tips, and I, I know a lot of people hate hearing this word, but I, I always stick with budget. Right. You know? <laughs> I mean, you can budget for a certain period of time until you're getting used to how you're tracking your money. Mm -hmm. You're getting used to where your money is going as, as opposed to wondering where, where, your, where did your money go? Mm -hmm. You know, as being mentioned earlier, you have to, you know, know exactly how you're spending your money and, you know, where you want to save and have some goals that you want to reach uh, for, you know, if you're planning to go on vacation mm -hmm. or you're planning to buy a new home, a new car, whatever, you have that goal and you know how much you're saving for that, you know, to accomplish it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's things we want to do in life. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Well, Certainly. thank you yes. so much for joining us today, it's Angela, sure. for those mm -hmm. inflationary tips. Okay, thank you. Tune in this Monday at 7.30 p.m. on Can TV Channel 19 for an inspiring sit-down conversation with state representative of the 26th District, Cam Buckner. In Chicago, the reason Chicago went up, not because of George, George Floyd per se, but because of what that symbolized and, and how familiar that was to right. all of us. Right. We learned today that inflation and supply chain issues can impact the power of the dollars in our wallets. By being aware of the forces that cause inflation, it can help us take proactive steps rather than being reactive when using our purchasing power. These steps may include comparing prices or buying items only when on sale to stretch dollars further. It also makes us spend money on the things that are most important to us. My money challenge to you is to first create a list of what is most important to you, and then compare that list of what you actually spend money on. For example, my faith and family are the top of my list. So my spending includes giving and my daughter's education fund. So in lean or high inflation times, the most important part of our lives doesn't suffer when things need to be cut back. If you have any questions about today's topic or past topics, 
please send me an email to Kimberly at inthemoneyemail.com or follow me on Instagram at Diva of Cashflow. Remember, we're in this journey together. <music>